Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at whether for next week, 10 days, for today's final video, day 10, will take us to the 31st of January. Wow, wow, wow. Last day of the month. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECF ensembles. May run to rail a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That will get us into the second half of uh, February. Or certainly into the middle of the month, anyway. So, uh, I shall get something back for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video to see was 6 a.m. upload. We've also released the weekend forecast and the ECM to for today slash six weeks. Okay, so check out those two videos. If you'd like to do that, like, share, and subscribe. I'll be here. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday afternoon. Chilly, isn't it? I don't know. Uh, right, okay, let's start off with stratospheric uh, data then, first of all. So uh, we're going to begin with the situation in terms of uh, the uh, temperature at 10 HPA over the Arctic and the North Pole from the GFS midnight run, bringing you bring up to with the latest two GFS runs. So the blue and purple colours here, these are the cold temperatures at 10 hundred grade in the stratosphere over the Arctic and over the North Pole. Let's see what the uh, GFS is for regards to the next couple of weeks. So a significant warming of the stratosphere occurring over Siberia there in around three days' time. Uh, really quite a, a significant warming that starts to uh, push in towards the Arctic and begins to displace. Uh, the polar vortex at its root, which is the blue colours, displacing that out into the uh, North Atlantic and into northern parts of Europe as well. That's uh, to be 29th of January. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, beyond that, uh, what's the way going over there? Uh, so, beyond that, we uh, see um, uh, that uh, the warming intensifies further. Actually, as uh, we go through in towards day 10, so uh, significant warming continuing, and it does start to push increasingly towards sort of Svalbard and that kind of area, actually. So very, um, very dramatic warming going on there by the time we get into the early part of February, moving in towards the uh, North Pole as well. Um, no split of a PB, displacement event. However, it does also by the very end, which gets 6th of February by the end of the, by the very end of this midnight GFS, but it does look as though the, uh, the um, PB is about to split there. So that's the photo vortex. It looks like it's uh, about done for, doesn't it? And about to split. If we go any further, it looks like we'd probably get a split with the two lobes of blue going in opposite directions. Certainly a significant warming of the strategy going on there anyway. Uh, up to um, the early part of February. Right, that's that done. Let's have a look at the 6th FM. So this is the latest GFS run. Again, same sort of idea. Blue, because cold temperatures at 10 hk over the uh, Arctic and North Pole at the moment. Uh, significant warming starting to gather pace in the early part of next week over Siberia that you will uh, see there. Uh, so we run on up <laughs> towards um, a week out or so. Displacement event has occurred by about first warming. So the PB is now uh, displaced out of the Arctic and into the North Atlantic and into Northern Europe as well. Uh, and moving on into the extended range with that uh, GFS run, the warming vein continues to intensify at the end of January into the beginning of February. Looks like a sudden stratospheric warming map, really, doesn't it? With a uh, very significant uh, rise in the temperature there, penetrating from Siberia into the North Pole. One thing we're still missing is the polar vortex has not split up to this point. It's displaced, but hasn't split. Um, and uh, that's how we finish up by the 6th of February. So we're all looking very interesting there with the two GFS runs. In terms of this warming of the stratosphere, let's go through GFS Ensemble, starting with the control run. This is how the control is looking today. Again, displacement event and a very significant warming of the uh, stratosphere. Uh, ensemble member number one looks like that. So, um, PV not as strong with warming and the PV sort of fights back. And still in business up to the early part of February there with ensemble member number one. Ensemble member number two looks like that significant warming and displacement, no split. Ensemble member number three 
<laughs> Looks like that. Uh, again, so displaced from the bank. Significant warming. Displaced from the bank. No split of BB. So it is still just about uh, holding on by its fingertips up to that point. Ensemble member number four. Looks like that. Again, significant warming. I'm scratching that one. Ensemble member number five. PB fights back on that one. Slightly toned down with warming, the PB ends up still over the North Pole, albeit somewhat weakened, but it's still there, still in business. Ensemble member number six. Significant warming. PB is still in business, though, up to the 6th of February. Ensemble member number seven. Oh, that one does have a split of a PB. That one is splitting PB there. Into two loads, got two loads of blue, one lot going over to America, one over northern parts of Europe. So that one does have a split of the PV. Ensemble member number eight, looking like this. A uh, few of these having the PV fighting back, aren't they, uh, today? So, uh, yeah, we still we do have the warming, but the PV, you know, it's not enough to PV out. And actually, the PV starts pushing back up towards the pole again uh, by uh, the 6th of February. Ensemble member number nine. It's a bit of a twist, isn't it? Ensemble member number nine, looking like that. So that splits the PV a little bit as well. Very significant warming of a strategy of that one. Ensemble member number 10. Looks like that. Uh, displacement event with that. PV displacing to northern parts of Europe. Ensemble member number 11. Very significant warming for strategy, but not splitting BB with that one. Ensemble member number 12. Oh, that one has a very significant warming from Siberia and towards the uh, North Pole. Does it split BB? Just about, probably. Ensemble member number 13. <coughs> Excuse me once again, everybody. BB still in business. Look at that. Despite the warming over Siberia, Ensemble Member 40. This is a bit of a twist today, isn't it? Plot is thickening, Ensemble Member number 14. Well, that one virtually <laughs> eliminates the polar vortex, really, doesn't it? Uh, how strange. What a strange set today. Ensemble Member number 15. It's like that. Uh, again, you know, a displacement event with that. Ensemble Member number 16. PV returns to the North Pole by the 6th of February. Ensemble member number 17. That one has a split of the polar vortex. That's splitting the PV. Ensemble member number 18. Um, it's very strange how this warming is sort of pushing into Siberia and then around to Greenland and the PV is running in underneath it, isn't it? <laughs> it all looks rather odd, doesn't it? Uh, ensemble member number 19. Looks like that. Um, so displacement with that one. Ensemble member number 20. Uh, again, displacement with that one. Ensemble member number 21. Uh, that one splits for PV as well. Splits it over sort of Northern Europe, which is quite unusual. Ensemble member number 22. PV returns to the pole, still in business, up to 6th of February. Ensemble member number 23, it's like that. Ensemble member number 24, splits the PV with that one. Oh, uh, what a mess today. Ensemble member number 25, uh, looking like that. PB fighting back, returning back to its rightful place in the North Pole, probably, just about. Ensemble member number 26. I mean, that one has a very significant warming and is a displacement event. Ensemble member number 27, looks like that. Ensemble member number 28. Looks like that. Um, I, know, I think that's written the BB, just about. Uh, ensemble member number 29, looks like that. And uh, ensemble member number 30, lastly, looks like that. So it's a real mess with those ensembles. Today. All sorts of possibilities going on the table there 
uh, for early February. I think the GFS is wobbling a little bit, though, uh, with uh, some of these runs returning the PB intact and, you know, still well doing business back to the Arctic and North Pole by 6th of February. This is how things look in terms of zone wins from whether it's cool. And this does highlight that because, um, you remember a couple of days ago, quite a few GFS on some members were sending the zone wins into reverse. Now, it looks like only one there uh, actually gets a technical reversal as zone wins. Most of them are pulled back from that idea. Most of them are still weakening the zone of wing. Yes, a uh, significant weakening of zone of wings, you know, taking place from where we are right now, which is just here. Uh, through the final week of January into the opening days of February. But there aren't many that are going for an actual reversal zone wing. So have a, have, to have a technical sudden stratospheric warming, we have to have a reversal of zone wings. It doesn't match as, as much in terms of the split. That's just helpful for us to get northern blocking, you know. Um, but to get to get an official uh, sudden stratospheric warming, we would have to have a reversal of zone wings. There are not many GFS ensemble members doing that, just like a couple getting to that zero line. So I think the GFS is wobbling a little bit on this uh, stratospheric warming. We are going to get a warming up of stratosphere. Just so like around three days time over Siberia. And it will carry on over the next week, 10 days, you know, in various bursts, getting closer and closer and closer to the pole. So that will weaken, it will displace and weaken the opponent vortex at least for a while. But, you know, whether this is the knockout blow, it's looking increasingly, um, increasingly wobbly on that idea. So we shall wait and see where we go with all of the latest stratospheric developments. Right, central temperature is currently sitting at 6.1, which is 2.3 degrees below average of provisional to the 20th of uh, January. That will come down more over the next few days. We've got several frosty nights to come. Uh, so by the time you get through to the uh, middle of next week, I would imagine that will be somewhere in the low fives. I would imagine that will be somewhere like 5.0 to uh, 5.5, something like that by the middle of next week. Going to do a little bit of CT Saturday. This is from Schreier, our good friend Schreier Bruin. Uh, noticed this and uh, sent it through. So this winter so far, this strange winter, very, very strange winter, because although it's not been a particularly cold winter, it has had the most numbers, uh, n most number of days uh, at or below freezing, zero degrees, since 2012-13, winter of 12-13. So you can see just here how many days we have had that have been at uh, at zero degrees or lower, you know, genuine uh, ice days. And um, it's above now uh, the winter of 2020-2021 just there. You'll notice we did get 2017-2018 just there. Um, otherwise, yeah, we have a long run with uh, most winters barely having, you know, a day or, or a day or two here or there. Uh, but uh, are at or below freezing. And we have to go right the way back to the winter of 2012-13, just here, for the last time we had more days um, through the winter that, uh, you know, had uh, had, had uh, days at or below freezing. Bear in mind, this is for November, December, January, February and March, so it's not yet complete. But we'll be interested to see where, where that finishes up, you know, where this blue bar here, where it finishes up by the time we get into uh, February. Uh, you see 2010 selling out very <laughs> very nicely uh, just there. So that had the most number of ice days since the winter of 1986, I think, just here, 1985, 1986, in, uh, in 2010. That's 2010, 2011. So we've got, uh, I think we've got um, 2008, 2009 there, 08, 09 just there, 09, 10 is there, and then that's 2010, 2011. And most of those ice days occur in uh in, in 2010 uh, of course in, in december i should say of uh, of uh, 2010 uh far fewer in uh, 2011 12 but there are some and uh, then for the winter of uh, 12 13 of course we uh, we go up to there uh, before that, the most the winter of both of ice days before 80, uh, 5, 86, um was 79, 979 standing out just there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's like the last time I had a, a sub-zero CT January in uh, 1978, 1979. 
And then we can see the daddy, of course. There's the daddy. The daddy. There's the daddy of Carl Winters having nearly 60 days. You know, well over half of the days of, uh, of the winter of 63 uh, uh, had ice days, you know, that were, that were below freezing. At or below freezing for the central in temperature. So, really, uh, really quite remarkable winter that. And again, you can see why it was the daddy of cold winters. 46, 47, 47 standing out very nicely just there, of course. And then we've got winter of 1939, 1940, just there, remember, from, like, from 1895 to 1940. There's not a sub zero CT month. And then January 1940 comes along. And, and gives us a, 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 a sub-zero CT month for the first time in, what, 45 years, something like that. So, um, yeah, that's how that's how it's, how it's looking. So, I mean, compared to those really big winters like uh, 62, 63, and 47, and, uh, and 1940, and 1979, and whatnot, we're, we're quite low still for uh, the number of ice days this winter. Um, but, but it's interesting, isn't it, that this is the most number of ice days in a winter that we've had. Uh, and we're only on the 21st of January as well, by the way, so this is the most number of ice days that we've had since 2012-2013. Uh, so, not a cold winter, but when it has been cold, it has been uh, very cold so far. Uh, this winter, and of course, we're going to wait and see how the rest of the winter plays out. Thank you, Sir Destroyer, for uh, sending that data through. Right, can have a look at GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble next. So, red light is a 30 year upper air temperature average for Telford. We're starting off cold and average at the moment. Don't go a little bit mild and average should be open up next week, but has been. Toned down a little bit, actually, but not as mild now uh, through the early part of next week uh, to the middle part of next week with the upper air temperatures as it looked like we may go uh, a few days ago. Nevertheless, we are going to see a tick up in the uh, upper air temperatures through uh, weekend, uh, rest of the weekend and into uh, the early to middle part of next week. Then after that, it looks quite chilly, really, doesn't it? Most of the uh, ensemble members are at or below average really for the last days of January and into the first week of February. It's not, not desperately cold, but um a little, a little bit below average. The white line should be on some of me is uh, generally trending either at or under the first year average. We have got a few really quite cold on some members there by the way through the opening days of February. And uh, today's why it could be lots of dry weather Telford as well over the next week or so we'll start to get more unsettled as we go through the uh, opening days of February and if it's cold enough some of that might be wintry we will have to wait and see uh, closer to the time frame snow row looks like that the Telford so uh, no snow over the next week to 10 days but there are some spikes there into the opening days of February Again, the possibility is on the table if it's cold enough that some of that precipitation that's coming back there might be uh, a bit on the wintry side. Who knows? Right, temperature anomaly here. So it'll be 21st to the 29th of January. It's going to be colder than average for England and Wales, but a little bit milder than average for Scotland and Northern Ireland. One of those topsy turvy weeks where it's colder in the south than it is in the north. And precipitation anomaly from the 21st to the 29th of January. Just going to be drier than normal. The latest info that from urbannorschool.net shows that we are trying to move milder air in from off the Atlantic today, but a lot of it has been shoved off away to our north. And actually, for England and Wales, anyway, we're drawing the air in from off the continent and will continue to do so over the uh, next few days, keeping things quite cold in the south up to the middle of next week. That brings us very nicely onto the UK Met Euro run. For midnight on Tuesday with high pressure dominating weather will be mostly dry. But for the south, quite cold as the air is coming in from off the continent. Through the middle part of next week, that high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic. We get some colder air coming in from the north around Bursley. That will bring a few wintry showers into northern and eastern areas. And then into uh, next weekend, from the high pressure, just sitting a bit further southwards, starting to allow something slightly milder to come in around the top of the high from off the Atlantic by next weekend. Icon, again, with high pressure dominating through the uh, early to middle part of next week. High pressure repositioning just out to our west, allowing something slightly cold 
to come around the top of the high into those east um, south east there. Might be one two wintry showers there. Essentially, it's dry there with high pressure in control right way through to the end of next week. And then by next weekend, last weekend, January, high pressure again, tipping away a little bit around some slightly milder air coming in uh, from the north, the uh, from the northwest, I should say. The GFS midnight run, again, high pressure is in control of weather in the next few days. The position does change through to the west of Ireland, allowing some north northeast winds to come around the side of the high. That could bring a few wintry showers into southeastern areas by Thursday. But essentially, the idea is mostly dry. Now, a little bit different with the GFS into next weekend. The high pressure pulls far enough away from us to allow colder air to dig in from the north. So we've got a chocolate load pressure bring some very cold weather to Scandinavia next weekend. We're just on the periphery of that, just on the edge of it. But we do pull some of that cold air in, actually, uh, next weekend. And we will see snow showers in the north and in the east with those uh, northerly winds. And maybe it's a rather strange scenario by day 10. So we've got high pressure just to our southwest, which wants to pull in milder air from the southwest. We've got this cold air sitting to our northeast. In between, we've also got a ridge building around Iceland. There's like a weather front that's through there. Uh, so it's very messy, but that's the kind of thing that could give a little bit of snow on the northern edge, you know, which would be for like northern and northeastern parts of Britain. That soon uh, gets replaced by the low pressure coming in from off the Antarctic. That low is struggling a little bit, though, as it comes up against the cold air that's sitting across northern and northeastern Europe. However, however, the Atlantic does break through eventually, turning us wet and windy through the first week of February, before we finish up bringing in a cold northwesterly, perhaps, by the 6th of February. So it doesn't look overly mild, <laughs> mild that, does it? Often quite chilly at the very least, if not relatively cold. The GFS sits there, the latest, again, showing high pressure in control of the weather over the next few days. The position does change to pull out to our west by Thursday, allowing more of a north northeast to come around the side of the high. Could bring one to wintry showers to eastern parts of the country, mainly dry in most places, though. And then next weekend, again, the high pressure just pulls out far enough to allow this cold northerly to uh, dig in. We're on the periphery of it, but cold rare is digging in from northern Europe there around uh, next weekend. Uh, then again, we have this rather odd pattern by the time you get through to day 10. We have high pressure building around Iceland, a deep cold pool sitting just to our north, uh, northeast, milder air trying to come in from off the Atlantic and some sort of weather from uh, through there marking the boundary, which is always quite interesting. The more extended range with the GFS 6 then low pressure then breaks through from off the Atlantic through the first week of February, turning us wet, windy. If you enjoyed this video, please give you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. We've just hit 15.4k. Thank you so much, everybody. We're pushing on now to 15.5k. 15. 15,500 subscribers in the next mini target, 16,000 subscribers, the ultimate target, of course. Please give us a sub, tell friends and family to subscribe as well. And we thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. GM, again, with high pressure in control through the early to middle part of next week. Actually, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold your horses. So that is a yesterday's GM. So I tell you what, as we've got Meta Sierra, why don't we see if it's updated over there? Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's updated. Uh, so, okay, this is the uh, GM. Forget that happened. <laughs> Let's drag this over here. GM uh, from uh, Meta Sierra this time. Uh, show that high pressure is in control of the weather over there. That was a save, wasn't it? I saved it at the last moment. Um, high pressure in control through the early to middle part of next week. High pressure repositions out to our west. We start to allow something a little bit colder in. By uh, next weekend, look at that, some cold air digging in. But we are on the periphery of it. It does turn very cold there across northern Europe with that trough of low pressure. Much of northern, central, and also eastern Europe. Those of you watching the Balkans, where it's been very, very mild since winter so far, it looks like you're going to get a real blast of cold air, a uh, real blast of winter in the closing days of January. We're just on the edges of that. Got to get high pressure just out a little bit further northwestwards to allow us to tap in. 
to that uh, northerly. Um, now that's how you finish with the GM by the time you get through to day 10, which is the last day of January. Of course, relatively mild, bringing winds through the west, low pressure north, high pressure south. Notice it's low down here around southern Italy. That's bringing very cold air into the Balkans, into Italy, Greece, Turkey. Those areas in southeast Europe will be getting snow there if that comes up. So, <laughs> snow in Athens, mild in London. It drives the weather fans <laughs> mad back. But we have had some cold weather this winter anyway. And, you know, at some point they were going to get, or they are got to get, some colder weather on the eastern, southeastern side of the continent. Uh, ECM, again, with high pressure in control of the weather. Through much of next week, we are on the periphery of a little bit of a northerly there on Thursday. And uh, we go into uh, next weekend looking like that. Again, rather milder with the ECM, I think. Much of Northern Europe looking very cold with that area of low pressure. We're just on the edge of that. Just on the edge. Maybe bringing some cold air into the north and the east, but most of it is over the other side of the North Sea. Uh, by day 10, looking relatively mild, wet, windy with that area of low pressure. This is my precipitation forecast based on that ECM run. From Tometro.com, there will be lots of dry weather away from Ireland and Scotland over the uh, next few days. Perhaps just starting to turn a little bit more unsettled by the time we get through to days 9 and 10. Uh, these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles to date from the ECM WF website. Have not got the uh, update. <coughs> Excuse me, the uh, update with clusters from the Icelandic Met Office. We have, however, got them from ECMWF.int themselves. So uh, we've got 20 members. This is from 31st of January. We've got 20 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to our south and also to our west, low pressure to our east and north east, that bringing all of that cold air into northern Europe, again, just on the edges of it, just on the periphery, that looks kind of similar, got the GFS, Midnight and uh, Six Head Runs to do, uh, then we've got 16 members of the ECM ensemble just here, that are flatter, with low pressure, you know, bringing more of a westerly type flow, so that's going to be milder, of course. And then we've got a 15 here, which I assume is the operational run included, but has high pressure towards Spain. Low pressure is uh, towards Iceland. And uh, winds are coming in from a westerly direction there. So rather unsettled Scotland, actually, but uh, a little bit dry for so, And uh, that, of course, is mild. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 5th of February. Uh, so, 19 members of the ECM ensemble with high pressure to our west and also to our north. Top of low pressure over on the eastern side of Europe. That means very cold air into the east of Europe. Meanwhile, we probably relatively mild, but we could go chilly uh, with that. But the main cold is over here in the east of Europe. Uh, um, then we've got uh, this option just here. 17 members of the ECM ensemble. Blasts of pancake, high pressure around Spain, low pressure around Iceland. Winds coming in. From the west sea direction and uh, then we have got uh, 15 members of the ecm ensembles with low pressure with greenland and iceland high pressure bridging through the uk up to scandinavia that's going to be mostly dry i might deliver a little bit of frost and fog and uh, that kind of thing with it Lastly, Serve SB2 means a 500 millibar high tonics breaking down into weak periods. The first week period takes from the 23rd, 27th of January. Coming week is dominated by high pressure, of course. So lots of dry weather and uh, for the south, quite cold. Uh, week 2 is interesting. 28th of January to the 3rd of February has high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland and brings in an easterly wind. So that looks cold there for the end of January and the start of February. Week 3! <laughs> will be the full <coughs> to the 10th of February with low pressure in from off the Atlantic, high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. So let's try to bring milder air in from the Atlantic, but, you know, cold air from the east could be continuing there, so it's kind of thing that might deliver some snow in the transition, anyway. And then uh, week four looks like that, the 11th, 17th of February, lots of blocking then in the North Atlantic and up towards Greenland. Got this trough of low pressure over here, a ridge over in the east side of Europe, that bring mild air into the east of Europe. I assume cold air is being pulled into that trough there. Um, so, overall, quite a cold-looking uh, CFS run today. 
for the next four weeks. Week one temperature anomalies look like that. Mild in the north, quite cold down in the south, very cold over on the continent. <coughs> if you get week two temperature anomalies from the 28th January to February, a little bit on the colder than average side. Week three is also colder than average, 4th to the 10th of February, but average temperatures then. A bit of a recovery into week four, which is the 11th, 17th of February, but only back to average, nothing particularly mild uh, showing up there. So quite an interesting CFS run today, probably an outlier, probably back to its mild, mild, mild stuff tomorrow, but today does look quite cold, actually, uh, for the next um sort of four weeks, especially so for England and Wales. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please give you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for both doing that. Why not drop a comment let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. I mean, thank you so very much everybody for doing that. It's been an extended video day, 30 minutes. Wow, wow, wow. A little bit of CT Saturday. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for trying uh, for that. Thank you so much for Richard as well for the uh, for the uh, subscribe gift. Uh, amazing. Thank you so much, Rich. Ding the bell as well, everybody. Uh, and uh, you'll be noticed by when we're releasing content. Right, that's it for today's video. Just to tell coming up tomorrow. We're going to start off with the uh, 6 a.m. upload. We've got another spring update coming. We will have a 10 to 14 day for you as well. So, uh, plenty of content on the channel tomorrow. Keep checking back for more for today's videos and for this video. That's all for now. And thanks so much.